What's happening guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So we had a decent show tonight. I thought they bookended it pretty well. Uh, fell flat in a couple spots. Uh, we had a couple squash matches and uh, some things that I just felt unnecessary. But let's get into it. So we opened the show with an X-Division tag match. At least that's the way they were branding it. Uh, Phantasma and Rohit Raju versus Ishimori and Matt Seidel. We also learned that we have a new commentary team tonight, um, Josh Matthews and Sanjay Dutt. It was speculated today that they were going to remove Jeremy Borash completely from commentary, and they did just that, and I think this was the right move for them. This was one of the cases where somebody left the company and they're able to remove them, so it was the right move in my opinion. And I thought Sanjay did a decent job for the night. Uh, no real complaints. Um, obviously, this is his first time doing it, so with time, he'll obviously get better. Um, so yeah, on to the match. It, it was a decent match. Um, they hyped the Desi Hit Squad, which I had talked about on this past week's Impact Report. Um, and, I mean, my biggest gripe here was that the crowd was just completely disconnected. Um, the front row, half of them were just on their phone not even looking at the ring, and it was just it was just sad to see. Uh, there was a point where Seidel kind of started yelling at the crowd just to try to get him into it because that's how uninterested they looked. Um, we saw a couple good spots in the match, uh, Ishimori hitting a moonsault onto the outside. Um, but the finish saw Ishimori hit the double knees on Rajo, and then Seidel finishing him off with the shooting star press. Uh, we got a lot of look backs to last week with Aries winning the title and things like that. So after this match happened, it was like 8.30. Um, and after that, we got the Austin Aries press conference that happened last week after his title win. Uh, I like what they did here. I thought that it was pretty cool concept of the press conference, kind of give it more of a sports feel rather than just being either interviewed or cutting a promo in the ring. It's different. I enjoyed it. Um, but Aries said... Well, first, he was asked a bunch of dumb questions, and he was like, you know, come on, guys, let's get some real questions here. And uh, he went on to say that he hasn't signed a contract and that he's still a free agent and will still go around collecting belts all over the world. And then someone asked, well, well what happens if you lose the Impact Championship in another in a non-Impact event? And Harry still got offended by that, and he said, well, I'll do my best not to do that. And then Eli Drake comes in, and he's pissed, and they start exchanging words, and Eli's screwing about no contract, and that he should be the champion. And uh, then eventually we learn next week that Eli Drake will get his rematch, and then after that they hype the Fatal 4 away for the number one contendership later on tonight. So up next we had a look back at Aries winning the TNA World Championship from Bobby Roode at, I don't remember, it was Destination X. Um, a few good things about this. Well, I guess it's not really good when you look at it now, but the impact zone was completely full and the crowd was fantastic. Uh, hopefully we can get back to that in the near future. But this segment, it went on too long and... For a casual viewer, I'm sure they were confused as hell. I don't know if they did this last week as well, but on the screen, there was no, I guess, format showing that it was a past event outside of the commentary. I mean, there wasn't even anything on the screen that said, like, Global Wrestling Network flashback, so I think this was poorly produced, this section, and like I said, it went on too long. Uh, so up next, we have a tag team match with Trevor Lee and Caleb Conley versus Team Tech. This was Monroe and Reed. Uh, this was basically a squash match. Uh, some of the best parts in this match was, uh, well, the Cult Elite coming out, impersonating and uh, mocking LAX. They had bandanas on. Uh, but yeah, like I said, this was basically a squash match. Um, Monroe never even got tagged into the ring, but the Cult Elite won with a spike pile driver. After the match, LAX comes up on the Tron. They tell Colt Lee that they'll never be anything more than wannabes. And they say they're coming. LAX music hits, and the Colt Lee flees the ring. So this, at least we're building to a feud here. 
we got another tag team on TV. Uh, it's been quite some time, and I enjoy Caleb Conley and Trevor Lee's work, so it's always good to see them. So we go, I think this was outside the arena, but we see Allie congratulating Kira Hogan on her victory last week and her championship bout later tonight. Well, I guess wishing her good good luck. Um, but Allie tells Kira that if there's any, you know, shenanigans that happen tonight, that she'll be in the back and she will have her back. Um, at this point, we get a delivery guy come up and he gives Allie a giant card. She opens it, Valentine's Day card. And uh, it says, meet me at the Impact Zone next week. Signed your secret admirer. So maybe this is Laurel Van Ness playing mind games. Maybe it's somebody else. I think the the commentary team mentioned something about, hey, where's that Braxton Sutter guy been recently when they were talking about this? So that was pretty good. But at this point, it was 9 o'clock, and not a whole lot happened. So next we have Moose being interviewed by McKenzie. Uh, he says everywhere he's gone, he's never gotten that shot at the top prize. He says he's hungry for gold, and he will become the number one contender. Decent promo here. And then we have the rematch from last week, now for the Knockouts Women Championship, or the Knockouts Championship. Uh, Kira Hogan versus the champion Laurel Van Ness. Uh, so we saw Kira get a bit more offense this week than last week. She looked pretty good. Um, excited to see what she brings in the future. But eventually Laurel Van Ness hits the unprettier, which was not very pretty. Um, and she retains her championship. Uh, after the match, Laurel beats down Kira, and Allie comes out for the save, which was continuing their storyline. So I'm sure Allie will get a championship shot in the future. So this is a little bit of an interesting segment. So we go outside the impact zone, and I guess it was outside there. Um, and we get hand cam footage of Lashley exiting his vehicle and then walking back to his vehicle. And uh, that was all we saw right then and there. We'll get a little more of that and find out who is behind it a little later on in the show. Then we have Mackenzie interviewing EC3. And EC3 says there's speculation on where he is, where he's going, et cetera, et cetera. He says that tonight he's, go or he's going to become a three-time champion. And then he runs down the other three competitors in the Fatal 4-Way. Up next, we have Jimmy Jacobs and Congo Kong backstage. Jacobs says he asked Joseph Park nicely to bring Abyss this week, and there is no Abyss. He says, if he won't bring the monster, then I will, Then we will drag the monster out of you. And Congo Kong is in the background looking menacing. Uh, this is a good promo. Jimmy Jacobs is fantastic. And uh, I'm looking forward to the sh eventual showing, probably, of Congo Kong and Abyss. Uh, at least it gives them something to do. A little surprising that we didn't get any type of retort from uh, Park. Joseph Park and, uh, well, Chandler Park either. So, up next, we had a little bit of an odd segment. Uh, this was Matt Seidel and Ishimori backstage, and Seidel's giving props to Ishimori for, well, his in ring work. And then they hype a match next week between Ishimori and Phantasma. So, there was that. So, now back to the cam, uh, hand cam footage uh, outside of the arena. So Lashley is still walking around and all of a sudden he gets attacked and we find out that it's OVE and then he gets thrown in the trunk. Um, I guess this is what they were talking about when they were talking that they have bigger fish to fry. So that's definitely an interesting way to go. Did not expect that. And up next we have another knockouts match with Hania versus Amber Nova. Um, a little hard to get behind this match or interested in the fact that Hania is already done with the company. Um, but a decent little match here. Uh, Amber goes for a Hurricane Rana, but Hania reverses it into a powerbomb, and then she puts her away with a reverse DDT. Uh, Amber had a little little bit of offense, but the match was mostly Hania. Um, and then after the match, Rosemary comes out and attacks Hania and goes for a red wedding, but Hania flees the ring. 
Uh, so I'm guessing we're going to get an eventual match between the two of them, and that will probably be it for her tenure in the company. And that brings us to the main event, the fatal four-way to crown the number one contender for, well, Austin Aries' championship, even though he's got a championship match next week. Um, so this match is Moose versus EC3 versus Johnny Impact versus Alberto El Patron. Um, so in the beginning, well, last week I should say we had a tag match between Moose and Johnny Impact versus EC3 and Alberto El Patron. And in the beginning of this match, Alberto El Patron and EC3 decide to team up and take out the other two, uh, obviously singly. Um, but eventually, it led, of course, the two hotheads could not get along for that long, and this led to everybody kind of fighting for themselves. A portion of the match spilled out into the outside. Um, Moose got laid out. I don't know exactly what happened. I missed this. Um, I know it was somewhere in the crowd. And then at one point, Johnny Impact picks up a set of crutches. I'm guessing it was the fans. And he started beating EC3 and Alberto El Patron with them. Uh, finally, the crowd started really getting into it. I think we got a This Is Awesome chant. Uh, Johnny Impact ended up in a plastic garbage can, and then he used the garbage can as a weapon afterward. Um, all four men went back into the ring. Moose Star was selling his knee, which is, I believe, I had reported weeks back about Moose being injured. Um, I guess this was the spot when it happened, but it turns out that it wasn't serious, so... Uh, so they started all exchanging offense back and forth. It eventually led to EC3 going for the one percenter on Johnny Impact, but Impact reverses it into a roll-up bridge for the win. Uh, like I said, this was a decent main event. No nothing wrong with it. Overall, decent show. Um, there's a lot that needs to be done. Um, I think the... Well, I should say Callus because Demora has worked with the talent a little longer. But this is the first time he's really seeing a lot of these competitors, so I'm pretty sure he's getting a feel for him, just to kind of see what what he can do with them and things like that. So yeah, that was my Impact Wrestling Review. If you like what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys.